Yes, yes, Master and Crew, back once again with another video. And just to give you a quick heads up, I'm in the process of sorting out all the discs uh, for my uh, archives and my song discs or my brain collection. It's going good, man. I think I've done over 200 discs now and it's still loads to go. Um, but the good thing is, is they're all literally uh, indexed up. It's a lot going to be a lot easier to find the disc now. And uh, I've actually got uh, my HXC sound library working pretty cool. Um, I've got this HXC emulator in the back here and uh, it's got a screen on it and uh, when you've got the screen and you've got that flash floppy installed it's a whole new ball game you can put folders on there uh, you can just organize your whole collection and basically have unlimited floppies uh, in my opinion it's much better than having a, a hot swap SCSI card reader uh, because of the fact that you've just seemed to have a, a lot more flexibility um, and the only minus is that you can't search your entire entire library but you can do it pretty quick by computer find the disc stick them on in a folder and then just load them in so it's still a really cool way to to do your archives man um and i've also found a song uh, called minano metal man you want to go walkies And I just wanted to quickly show you analog and digital working together. Analog samplers playing all the sounds. Amigo as well, got a couple of sounds on there. Brakes coming out from the Akai. Run this from the top. Let's go back to that little part I was at just now. Bear with me that I've got this up on the screen here. So let's go back to here. Press play. There you go. So we're rolling, right? I've got the spectrum analyzer over here. So I can watch what I'm doing on the mix. It's something I couldn't do back in the day. I can also monitor my WAV, sort of how it, how it looks to see if uh, it's clipping or anything like that. See if anything's too loud. I'm also ready to bounce. So I can put extra effects on the tracks. Looking good. HXC emulator in the sampler. Akai S3200 XL, 950 and also 3000 and using Elisus HR16 on the drums. Got a little 4-4 kick drum going on now. And uh, yeah, it's looking good mate. Just finalising, tweaking. That's just a test wab to see what it's looking like. I've got the bass chair rumbling in the background so I can monitor the bass frequency. I was just about to bounce it and then I literally switched this bass chair on and I heard a whole heap of low end that I didn't need, man. That was just standing, just, I couldn't even hear it on the monitors. So this is now low tight, high tight. Man, this is cool, man. Cool, cool. 20th, 21st century business. Analog and digital together. Yeah. They say which one's better. They're both just, they're both good, man. And use them in combination. That's a whole new ball game right there, man. You're getting the, you're getting the analog fat and you're getting, the, you're getting the digital convenience. So you can monitor and, you know, dial in. It's cool. I've got, uh, I'm also using the RME um, mixer over here. So we look there, we've got, we're using the uh, analog mixer, RME. We've got a couple of inputs going in now. One from the Akai, another from the Amiga. And uh, I'm actually thinking about getting an, a, a better mixer than the one I've got because this Mackie, although I love Mackie, it's knackered, man. It, you can't do much separation on it. Another little thing that I'm doing currently is as I run a disc off, yeah, I'm having to put HXC on it so I don't forget that I've already archived the disc because um, there's so many discs here, I, I just end up getting mixed up. Yes, guys, this is the sound of a knackered disc. Listen to that thing making loads of racket. I'm trying to use Omniflop to recover it, but I doubt if it will work, man. I'm a everyday jungle, 